In this video, I'll talk a little bit more about electric potential. So, I know that the electric potential from a single point charge is given by the equation 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, which is a constant 9 times 10 to the 9, times the charge Q1, that's the charge that creates that uh, electric potential, and then I have the magnitude of the vector r from 1 to 2. Now, what this vector is, if I have the source charge Q1 at location 1, and I want to find the electric potential at location 2, this vector r goes from 1 to 2. It has the tail at the charge Q1, and the tip is at the location 2, where I want to find the electric potential. Now, some uh, a simple example let's say that i have q1 is an electron so the charge will be minus 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs and let's say that that distance because it, it is really distance between point 1 and point 2 Let's say that this is 5 centimeters. Then what we get, let's call, I'm going to call this one equation 1. So from equation 1, this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9. I'm Because that's the constant, and then I have Q1. And I'm dividing this with the distance. And this is equal to 290. If you do 9 times 1.6 divided by 0 0.05, you will find a minus with the minus sign 290 times 10. And then for the powers of 10, I have 9 plus 9 minus 19 and this is going to be in volts. Now, wh what do we do if we have not one charge, like we did here, we had just Q1, but we have another one. So let's say we have charge Q3 right here. And we can use the same process. Let's say that Q3 Let's make that a proton plus 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. And let's say the distance from 3 to 2 is now equal to 0 0.04 meters. So we're talking about 4 centimeters. Now, to show, I can show you what that vector looks like from 3 to 2. That's it. So this is the vector that goes from charge 3 to location 2, where I want to find the electric potential. Now, the electric potential from charge Q3 at location 2 is equal to the constant. We have charge Q3, and we're dividing with the distance from 3 to 2, 9 times 10 to the 9, and I have plus 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulomb divided by 0 0.04 meters. This will give me plus 360 times 10 to minus 10 volts. Okay, this time the electric potential from Q3 to location 2 is a positive number. So V3 at location 2 is showing me that I had a positive number, whereas before from charge Q1 at location 2, that was a negative number. Now, why is that the case? If you look at the equation, the constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is always 9 times 10 to the 9. It's always a positive number. 
then the denominator here, that's the magnitude of a vector, that's the distance, and the distance can always be, we're either talking about zero or a positive number, and we are uh, not going to discuss the case where this is approaching zero. So for us, this will always be a positive number, positive number, positive number. The only thing that can change sign is the charge, Q. And depending on the sign of the charge Q, that will determine what the sign of the electric potential is. So if your charge Q is a positive charge, then your electric potential will be a positive potential. If Q is a negative charge, then you're going to end up having a negative electric potential uh, re resulting from that negative charge. And that was the case here in our calculations. Now, let's say in the case where I have both Q1 and Q3, what will the potential be at location 2? In that case, I have to take into account both. So if the question is, what is the electric potential at location 2, then this will be the electric potential created by charge 1 at the location 2, and the electric potential created from charge Q3 at location 2. And the numbers that I have from, uh, from my previous calculations, minus 290 times 10 to minus 10, plus, okay, so that was 1, I was the first one, plus 360 times 10 to minus 10, and the result is plus 70 times 10 to minus 10 volts. That is the total, the net electric potential at location 2, when I take into account both charges Q1 and Q3. And why is it a positive number? It ends up being a positive number because the electric potential from Q3 at 2 was greater in absolute value than the one that Q1 creates at location 2. And the reason for that is that the distance is smaller. So Q3 was closer than uh, at location 2 to location 2 than charge Q1 was. Q1 was further than um, Q3. Now I'll show you a different way to use the same uh, the same expression. So okay, let's say we have our location, our observation location. So let's make this location one, and I have. So let's say from 1 Okay, I have the same distance on both sides. So from here to here, this is D. And then from here to here, that is also D. And I have two charges, so I'm going to place, let's say, charge Q, and this is charge, let's call this Q2, let's call this Q3. And now I tell you that the absolute value of Q2 is the same as the absolute value of Q3. But I will not tell you what are the signs of Q2 and Q3. So you do not know which one, which one is positive, which one is negative, and there is a case, a chance, that both of them are positive and both, or both of them are negative. So you do not know the signs of those two charges, but you do know that in absolute value they are the same and they're also the same distance from point one. Now, if I tell you that the net, the total electric potential at location one, what can you conclude, okay? Let's see what information I can get from, from this. Now, I know that the, the net electric potential at one, okay. so I know because I have two charges, 
nearby that the electric potential at one is going to be the electric potential that charge two creates at location one plus the electric potential that charge three creates at location one. And that is going to be equal to the constant, one over four pi epsilon naught, charge Q2, the magnitude of the vector that goes from two to one, plus the constant Q3, the magnitude of the vector that goes from three to location one. Now, the, the, as I said before, the, the constants are always the same, 9 times 10 to the 9. The distances, so let's do okay, 9 times 10 to the 9. I have Q2 divided by D. How about I do this? I can take out the constant as a common factor plus Q3 over D. And that is the electric potential at location one. But I do know, I, it was given to me that V1 is exactly equal to zero. Now because, okay, every anytime you have a product that is equal to zero, so let's say A times B equals zero, if you have something like this, there are two possibilities. Either A equals zero, or maybe three I guess, b equals zero or both of them are equal to zero. Now in, in my case I have nine times ten to the nine, okay so that would be my a and this would be my b. Obviously a in nine times ten to the nine which is um, factor a here is not equal to zero. So the only way to make v10 is to make this factor equal to zero. And this means that Q2, now I'll change it a little bit since they have the same denominator, Q2 plus Q3 over D is equal to zero. And if I multiply both sides with D, then what that gives me is that Q2 plus Q3 is equal to zero, or Q2 is equal to minus Q3. Okay, this is my finding. This is what I got from the information that was given to me that Q2 is equal to minus Q3. Now, what this tells me, if Q2 is a proton, then to make the electric potential at one zero, I will have to have an electron at uh, as my charge Q3. If Q2 is an electron, then Q3 will need to be a proton, okay? So this equation will need to be satisfied in order to make the electric potential at one to be zero. If Q2 is 10 to, is one, um, is one nanocoulomb, 10 to minus nine coulombs, then this will have to be minus one nanocoulomb to make the electric potential at one zero. Now I can also ask you, Okay, in the case where V1, the electric potential at 1 is 0, what is the net electric field? So if V1 is 0, does it mean that the electric field at 1 is also 0? Let's see what happens. So I need to, I need to use the fact that Q2 is equal to minus Q3, and there are really two possibilities. Either Q2 is a positive charge and Q3 is a negative charge, or Q2 is a negative charge and Q3 is a positive charge. So I'm gonna start, let's make, let's make the assumption that Q2 is positive, Q3 is negative. Now, if that is the case, then since Q2 is a positive charge, the electric field that Q2 will create at location one, this electric field will have to point away from the positive charge Q2 and away means that it will point this way. So this will be E2 at the location of one. Now, for, for the electric field that charge Q3 creates, this is a negative charge, and the negative charges create an electric field that points towards them, 
So at the location of Q1, an electric field that points towards Q3 will also point to the right. And this is the electric field that charge Q3 creates at the location 1. And if you add these together, you will get, okay, I'll draw it here. It's going to be an electric field that is really the sum of these two. So this will be E net at location 1. And as you can see, the E net, the net electric field at location 1 is not 0. Okay, obviously it is not 0, even though the electric potential at 1 is 0. Now, th there is another possibility. Q2 could have been a negative charge and Q3 could have been a positive charge. In that case, you would find that the net electric field points to the left and it is certainly not 0. So, the fact that the potential at the point is 0 does not necessarily mean that the net electric field at that point is also zero. Okay, so that's not a fact that you can use. In all cases, you will have to examine what happens to decide what is the net electric field. So that was it about electric potential.